Hello, and welcome to this training series for the SU25T Frogfoot. In this video lesson, you will learn the startup sequence, how to manage your payload, how to taxi to the runway, and how to set yourself up for takeoff. Note that in some missions, you may begin with the plane already started and ready to taxi. You might be positioned ready for takeoff from the runway, and sometimes you will start in the air and already en route to your target. If, as in this case, your mission starts with the plane off, here's how we get it started. First, turn on your plane's electrical systems by holding right shift and tapping the L key. As you can see, the heads up display and several of the aircraft's avionics start up and calibrate themselves to a default state. Your artificial horizon calibrates itself. That's this guy right here. Your fuel gauge fills up to indicate how much fuel you have in the aircraft. You'll also probably start to receive radio messages from allied aircraft and you're going to hear this annoying radar beeping from your radar warning system if there are any friendly AWACS in the sky or enemy radars nearby. You can disable it by holding right shift and tapping the R key, or you can turn it down by holding right alt and tapping the comma key. If you want to turn it back up, you can hold right alt and tap the period key. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to disable it because I don't I don't plan on encountering any enemy aircraft or any enemy radar installations during this tutorial. We'll enable it and explore it in more depth in a future lesson. Now you can look around your cockpit by using your mouse. You can also zoom in and out using your mouse wheel. You can also look around the cockpit using your numpad keys 4, 8, 6, and 2. You can recenter your view by pushing numpad 5, and you can zoom in and out using the numpad asterisk and uh, forward slash or dividing um, keys. You can reset the zoom by pushing numpad enter. Before starting our engines, let's review and customize our current payload. To do this, Hold down left alt and press the single quote key, also known as the apostrophe key. You'll notice this menu with a representation of your aircraft pops up. It's got graphical indicators of what weapons you have loaded and on which pylon they're loaded. You can customize each pylon individually by right clicking and selecting from the drop down here. You can also select from several predetermined loadouts. These loadouts, the predetermined ones, can be customized in the mission editor. You can also modify the amount of flare, chafe, gun ammo, and fuel you currently have. Since this lesson doesn't cover any weapons employment, I'm going to go ahead and select the empty preset. It'll make my plane significantly lighter and easier to fly. I'm going to go ahead and leave the amount of countermeasures, gun ammunition, and fuel default. You can go ahead and click OK to accept this new loadout. Your pilot will request rearming and sometimes refueling if you change your fuel level. And the ground crew will copy your request. Request rearming. Copy. Press F2 to switch to an external camera, and you can use your mouse to rotate it. And your mouse uh, wheel to zoom in and out. We can watch the ground crew take off the weapons. Note that in order to refuel or rearm your aircraft, you have to be parked, your engines have to be turned off completely, so it has to be at zero RPM on each engine, and your canopy has to be open, otherwise the ground crew won't even acknowledge your request. Rearming complete. Now that all the weapons have been taken off our plane, let's go ahead and get her started up. Press F1 to get back to your cockpit view. I want to direct your attention to these gauges right here. This gauge is the engine RPM. It's uh, indicated in percent. It's not a uh, revolution per minute, it's actually percentage of the total engine rotary speed. Since the SU-25T has two turbine engines, there are actually two needles on this gauge. Since they're both turned off, 
needles are pretty much right on top of each other. You'll notice the top needle has the number 1 on it, and that indicates that it represents en engine 1, which is your left engine. Let's go ahead and start this engine by holding right alt and tapping the home key. You'll notice that one of the two indicator lights beneath the RPM gauge, the one labeled start left, has turned on. Passing waypoint three at 20. This indicates that the left engine is currently cycling on. The RPM needle, representing the left engine, has also started moving as the engine spools up. This needle will come to rest at about 32% RPM once the engine has started and is idle. Start left light will also go out. At this point, the left engine is ready. You can start the right engine by holding right control and tapping home. You'll notice that the right engine needle starts to move and the start right light will turn on for a moment until the right engine is ready and idle as well. At this point, we can close the canopy by holding left control and tapping the C key. We'll wait for our engine to finish spooling before we request taxi to the runway. Alright, now that both of our engines are on and idle, we'll go ahead and open our radio menu by pushing the backslash key, which is the key in between your backspace and enter key on most keyboards. You'll notice the radio menu opens up on the top right of your monitor. And it indicates that if we push F1, we will request our taxi to the runway. Go ahead and tap F1. We'll request clearance to taxi the runway. After a moment, Kutaisi Tower will clear you for taxi to runway 26. Kutaisi, Springfield, 1-1. One, one. Request taxi to runway. Great! Now, where's runway 26? How do we find it? Luckily for us, all airports label their runways in a very simple fashion. The runway number, in our case runway 26, corresponds to the compass heading that the runway is pointing in. In our case, that heading is going to be 260. The runway number is always, plus or minus a few degrees, the compass heading divided by 10. It also indicates to you, the pilot, which direction airport traffic is traveling. This is where our HSI, or our Horizontal Situation Indicator, comes in very handy. The HSI is essentially a compass for your aircraft. The top of the gauge represents the direction that the nose of your aircraft is currently pointing, in this case about 3, 4, 5 degrees. The bottom of the gauge represents the tail, or the back of your aircraft, so just about 165-ish, somewhere around there. And with this information, we can determine that runway 26, which points at 260, should be running from our right-hand side to our left-hand side. So the runway is going to be pointing about to our left, right in between that 24 and the 27, where 260 would be. We also know that any aircraft that are landing are going to be landing in this direction as well. So they'll be coming in from our right and landing in that direction, towards the west. So like I said, we're currently pointed at about a heading of 245 degrees. It's pretty close to north, but just a little bit off center from north. Um, but we still don't really have an idea of where we are. I mean, we can see that there's a taxiway in front of us and a taxiway that goes right to left. Um, so let's go ahead and open our overhead map and that'll give us a, an overview of our airport. Press F10, and that'll bring up your map. Now this map is oriented just like any other map. North is up here, west, east, south. So heading of 360 or 0, a heading of 90, a heading of 180, and a heading of 270. Since we're pointed at 345, we're just about pointed like that, almost 360. And that information is important. In just a second, we'll find where we are. These uh, buttons up here on the top of the map, 
they kind of help you with uh, certain things. You can see detection areas for various enemy units that have radars um, or visual detection. Um, you can look at object labels where it'll tell you what the name of everything is. The button that we're interested in is this one right here that says me. What that'll do is it'll actually center the map on your aircraft. Springfield is RTB at 19,000. You can left click and drag the map around and you can actually zoom in and out using your mouse wheel if you want. Um, if you push on the me button, it will center the map on your plane and you can no longer drag the map around. You can zoom in and out and it, it zooms in on your plane. So this A represents our plane. If we click on it, we'll get a detail view down over here. Um, you can also click on other objects. You'll also notice that a selected item turns yellow. So here's an AWACS plane. I clicked on him. He's selected. Here's all of his information, where he is, his speed, altitude, stuff like that. Um, and you'll notice that he's yellow. If I deselect him, his icon turns blue again. Any other unit that's a friendly unit will be blue. Any other unit that's an enemy unit will be red, uh, unless you're on the red team, in which case opposite. But your icon will always be white if nothing is selected. Naturally, if your icon is selected, you will be yellow. But if you click anywhere on the map, it will deselect you, and you'll turn white again. So if you zoom all the way out, your icon is always the white one. But I think the me thing works a little bit better. So here we go, we zoomed in on our aircraft. And we can see our airport here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uncheck me and recenter the aircraft uh recenter the airport on my screen here. Uh I know that that's me. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so I can get a better view of the the entire airport. Now since I know that this is me and I know that I'm pointing at about 245, which looks like it's the taxiway right in front of me, is right up there. Um, and I know that the runway is pointing at about 260, which is about this direction here. I can pretty much determine that since all of these little skinny guys here are taxiways, that this thicker line is very likely the runway. And since I know that aircraft are traveling from east to west, 260, I'm pretty sure that that's the start of runway 26. And that's the end of runway 26. Also know that if for whatever reason Kutaisi was having aircraft land on this side of the runway and travel in this direction, that I can just take the opposite direction of 260 and I get the heading of that runway. So if I take 260 and subtract 180 from it, this is runway 8 pointing at 80 degrees. But that's not where they told me to go. They told me to go to 260, so I'm going to go over here. Now on this map, now that I've determined where I'm going, right there, I can kind of trace along here with my mouse and, and see that I need to pull out of my hangar, turn right at my first right, go to my next right, turn right again, and then that'll take me to the runway. So let's go ahead and get set up for taxi and taxi to the runway. Press F1 to return to your cockpit view. Actually, if you want to check your work, you can always hit F2. Zoom out from your aircraft, and you can zoom out quite a bit. And we can see that there is runway 26. And if we zoom out a little bit more and come and look at this side of the runway, we'll see that that is runway 8, runway 08, pointing at 080 degrees. And we can also see that, yes, I want to pull out, turn right once, turn right again, and that'll take me to the runway threshold. So I'm going to push F1. Actually, I'm going to zoom back in first. Push F1, get back into my cockpit. Now before we start moving, let's turn on our position lights. I'm actually going to go back out to F2 and show you this. It's a little easier to see. If you hold down right control and tap the L button, you notice your wingtip lights and a tail light turned on. These are your position lights. They make it really easy for other aircraft to be able to spot you. Um, you can also cycle through a couple of modes. Uh, if you hold right control and tap L again, you'll notice that your wingtip lights alternate, blinking. 
and if you tap right control L one more time, it turns all of them off. I generally turn on the solid position lights right after I turn on my electrical systems, and what that indicates is that I'm in the aircraft, the aircraft is starting up, but I'm not planning on moving anywhere. After the engines are on, and I've been cleared to taxi, I'll switch them to alternate blinking, and that indicates that I am planning on being a moving object, so keep an eye on me because even if I'm stopped, I'm going to be moving. And I'll usually leave the alternate blinking on until I'm either inbound to a target uh, or after I've parked again after landing. Um, I'll switch them back to the solid lights uh, until I shut down my aircraft. So basically for me, if they're solid it means that I'm stationary, I'm not planning on, on moving anywhere. If they're blinking it means that I am currently a moving target. Even if I'm even if I'm stopped, I'm I'm planning on moving somewhere else. So with that in mind, we've got our blinking lights on. We're also going to turn on our taxi lights. That's right alt and tapping L. You'll notice that right underneath the wingtips, two little light posts come down and light up the, uh, the taxiway for me. Let's go ahead and press F1 to get back into our cockpit view. And we are now ready to taxi. Now your aircraft's speed, both ground speed and air speed, are indicated in the top left of your HUD. This number right here. The triangle beneath the number and that solid line it's kind of a quick indicator to tell whether you're speeding up, slowing down, or holding your current speed. Depending on whether the line moves to the left, whether it's in the center, or whether it's on the right-hand side of that line. It only tracks significant changes in speed, so a lot of times when you're moving around on the ground it won't move very much. Um, but if it moves to the left it means that you're slowing down. If it stays centered it means that you're more or less maintaining your speed, and if it moves to the right, it means that you're speeding up uh, significantly. Now, again, if you're slowly kind of adding a little bit of speed, that indicator might stay centered, uh, but you might, you know, go up 10 meters a second um, slowly. Uh, it's just a real quick way to, to see whether you're speeding up or slowing down. What we're going to do is we're going to center our view and uh, go to the default zoom by pushing numpad 5 and enter. We're going to raise our throttle to about 60% RPM. And that's going to get the aircraft rolling. And then we're going to manage our RPM somewhere between idle, which is the 32% that we're at now, and 60%. We want to maintain about 10 to 20 meters per second um, down the taxiway. I'm going to go ahead and do that up to 60%. The aircraft will start rolling. I'm going to kind of slow down. You'll notice that my the, the triangle to indicate whether I'm speeding up or slowing down is centered even though I am speeding up slowly. Now coming up to this junction, we're going to look to our left and then look to our right, make sure that nobody's coming. And we're going to go ahead and make our right hand turn as we determined in our overhead map. Now you can use your wheel brakes if you want by pushing W and the default rudder controls are the Z and X keys. The W key is your speed brake uh, when you're on the ground, your wheel brake. And it works just like a, a regular brake would. As you push down the button as long as you hold down the button, you're effectively holding down your brakes. Just keep traveling down the taxiway here at a slow, slow crawl. You're looking more for control and less for getting to the runway real quick. So here's our next right-hand turn. We're going to look down and make sure that nobody's coming and turn the aircraft. Now if we look at our HSI down there, you'll notice that it is, in fact, turning to match our direction. So now, where the runway used to be on our left, uh, used to be running right to left, now we're at the base of the runway and it's running to our right because we've made a U-turn. We're now pointing in the opposite direction, so likewise the runway is now pointing in the opposite direction.
Try and keep yourself centered on the taxi line, just like a center line in a in a car on a road. And here, as we pull up to the runway, I'm going to drop my engines back to idle. I'm going to use my wheel brakes to stop just short of the runway. If we hit F2 and go to our external view, we can zoom out and confirm that we are indeed at runway 26 and we are holding short for takeoff clearance. Check our left, make sure that we don't see any anybody coming in for landing. Check our right, make sure that we don't see anybody taking off. And this concludes our first lesson in the SU-25T. In our next lesson, we will discuss takeoff, basic waypoint navigation, and the various different autopilot modes that the SU-25 offers you.